Okay, so for the next portion of our conversation, let's talk a bit about like why we're we're doing this. Like what why don't we just partner together or yeah. whatever? But the question I want to start with, um, somebody mentioned this to me and I was like, Oh yeah, I guess this is really true, is from the outside, our churches look super different. Hmm. Right? Like yeah. like if somebody were to just have never heard of either of our churches before and would walk in Sunday before service starts, yeah, and were to be greeted by the greeter and look around at what they see in the foyer and come yeah. and find their seat and experience worship on Sunday and leave. Um, I don't know if anybody would say those churches look <laughs> the same, <laughs> right? Because because yeah. we have a new new church slate. It's five years old, right? Or six? Six. Yeah. Six. Yeah. Um, y- you're meeting in a, in a theater and at a concert hall. Yeah. Um, that's generous to describe Maxwell's <laughs> concert hall, a concert area. It's, yeah, it's a wonderful place. <laughs> it's awesome. But it's hard to describe. It's not a hall. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and so you're 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 packing in and out every service. Um, yeah. Slate's demographic would be younger than Koinonia's, both in um, church leadership and in congregation. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it's loud and and it's exciting. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And then the and Koinonia is very different in that we have this facility. Um, we're 40... 39. 39. Wow, yeah. March will be 40, eh? Mm-hmm. Crazy. Yeah. Um, uh, we've been around for many years. We have a facility with very tall ceilings. Yeah. You could call it a hall. <laughs> <laughs> um, and our church demographic would be older than Slate. Um, we have lots of experience. Our leadership is older. Um, so it's like very, mm-hmm. and, and uh, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't describe our services as loud. Mm-hmm. Um, there's nothing wrong with the differences. I'm just yeah. highlighting them yeah. because to, to walk in, it's like, oh, this is different. So like what from the outside looks very different. Why? <laughs> what? What is similar? Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about this a bit. Well, you're of a younger generation, Nick, so there's others who walk into Quinnia service and say, this is loud. <laughs> yeah, that's well, right. <laughs> sure. That's true. Yeah. They've um, never been to Maxwell's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. That, that's just all, that's all you have to do. If you think it's loud, just go to Maxwell's once. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, some similarities that I see, mm-hmm. and obviously we're going to point right to Jesus at the beginning, mm-hmm. is Jesus is at the heart of both of our communities, our leadership. Um, and that's a draw right away. Um, the language, the words we use about coming to Jesus and, and having Jesus transform you, forgive you, heal you. A lot of our discipling language is mm. very, very similar. How we walk out making disciples. Slate has used a term called, we have locals, smaller communities. Quinn has used the term groups. Um, we have smaller communities. Um, and even how we do youth ministry or young adult ministry. Um, in our earlier conversation, we talked about uh, when you were leading a, a embassy a young adult ministry, and I, w- I was leading here at Koinonia, and, and how similarly we were, and we had conversations to say, hey, we, we do a lot the same. Let's yeah. make sure that those who are being a part of our communities get grounded, grow as disciples, and they don't just jump in back and forth. Yeah. So our hearts had a lot of similarity already for how to pastor, how to disciple, mm-hmm. how to lead people. That would be some of the things that I see right away of how we are the same, even though yeah. there's differences. Yeah. Like one of the things we struggle with is like perception is so often reality. Mm. And it's true. And that's why we should actually be aware of perception and not let it rule our lives. So do you mean like, just to clarify, you mean like how people would perceive of the church becomes their reality of what they experience? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Or the way that they might look at another church and go, oh, they look like this. This means this. Ah, got it. Right. Yeah. Another way we could say it is style doesn't equal substance. Right. Whether you have New style, old style, loud style, um, contemplative, style. contemplative. <laughs> it doesn't style doesn't equal substance. Whatever right. your style is, right? And I remember g- growing up um, in high school. I grew up in a really small town. This was the era of guys wearing small jeans again. 
and it hadn't yet hit my small town of Coburg, but I started dating this. Wait, do you mean skinny jeans? Skinny jeans. Okay. What did I say? Small, small jeans. Small jeans. I was like, what could small jeans be? <laughs> That's so funny. That's hilarious. Actually, yeah, small jeans. <laughs> so skinny <laughs> jeans. And um, I started dating this girl from the big city. And so I got introduced to her whole friend group. They're all wearing skinny jeans. Small mm-hmm. jeans. Back in Coburg, we're, right. we're wearing the baggiest thing we can find. <laughs> True. And so I remember going with my friend. To Yorkdale Mall, picking out a whole new wardrobe, Let's coming go. home. And I remember like walking to the house and my dad being like, you're not my son. <laughs> <laughs> a little tongue in cheek. But I knew he also had a problem with it. Right. <laughs> and and there was a little bit of it where like the only guy walking around Coburg in skinny jeans was my dad's son. And my dad's a, you know, dude. Right. <laughs> he's like, <"No."> and uh, <laughs> he's like, uh, what in the world? And people would have looked at us like, how do those two people come from the same family? And yet again, style doesn't equal substance. We had the yes. same DNA. Right. If you met my dad, we were so similar. Yeah. So just because we decided to dress ourselves differently, nothing had changed on the inside. Mm. And I think like, man, if we're going to chalk up church to style and that's what needs to be unified in order to move forward. Mm. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're going to fight an uphill battle here. Yeah. But if you allow communities to define how style should at work and you drive after substance, Mm. and that's what you find unity on, then things are going to be okay. Mm. Does that mean that style won't change? No. Style is always changing with the mm. leader, with totally. the people, with the mm. whoever with God time. is with time. Yeah. Mm. And so certainly some things will change. Mm-hmm. But will everything change? No. Because a community is made up of the people that show up. Yeah. Mm. And so we can't chalk things up to the things that often we look at and we go, it doesn't look the same. Yeah, I mean, those disciples didn't look very much the same either. (laughs) Like, my goodness, they were a ragtag bunch. And yet, God used 11 guys to change the the face of the earth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We are we are here as a church because 11 guys. Yeah. It's so wild. <laughs> yeah, they were very different. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. And in this piece about unity, we're not looking for uniformity. No. As you talk about style, there's going to be things that are central. Yeah. But then things that are very local yeah. to our locations, our campuses, um and allowing that location to be who yeah, they are. And yet we're following very similar, following Jesus together, following some central things, but we're not looking for uniformity, everybody to look the same. No, we want yeah. people to grow in their faith individually and in their communities where they are. Yeah. 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 So we've talked about, as we answer the why question, we've been referring to just like over the course of this um, this process, uh, kingdom principles that have informed a lot of the why, and unity is one of them that you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, could you talk about some of the other ones as well? Mm-hmm. Which one will we jump to? <laughs> There's so many to choose from. Yeah. <laughs> well, this humility piece, I think, is uh, could be a good place to start because mm-hmm. that emphasizes, like, from for you guys anyways, yeah. p- bringing your gifts mm-hmm. in before mm-hmm. the team and being like, okay, because we can talk a little bit about leadership, Actually, too. Actually, that's a great one. How that comes mm-hmm. together. Yeah, let's talk about humility. Yep. Yeah, do you, humility, uh, we both equally see it. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility... Think of others before yourselves. And hmm. we see that in Jesus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we see that he tried to disciple and, and pass it along to the 12 disciples. And and we've embraced it and said, yeah, we're gonna, we need to walk humbly before our God, not arrogantly, not like we've got it all figured out. And when there's, uh, we've heard this quote before, when there's corporate humility, that will lead to unity. Mm. And But the, for the corporate, the the larger gatherings of the congregations to walk in humility, they, they need to see it modeled, yeah. led, taught. And so it's something I truly see in Brandon and Emma, um, them humbly walking it out. There was times in Brandon's story, and he shared it with me, that he's like, God, I'll, I don't need to do this. I, I, I'm doing it to serve you as a servant. Hmm. So if you want to pass it to somebody else, give it, I release it. Um, I'm called by you. Mm-hmm. So I've seen that in you, humbly giving back. And then the Lord said, no, I'm going to actually enhance what I've called you to and, mm-hmm. and lead you to it in it even more. And that comes out of humility. We don't need to promote ourselves. Yeah. Uh, God will take care of whatever yeah. promotion is appropriate if it is. Right. Um, we just need to submit to one another out of mm-hmm. reverence for Christ, Ephesians yeah. 5, 21, and just say, man, I see Christ in you, mm-hmm. and I want to submit to what he's doing in your life, and I see you honoring me in the same way. And I feel like as we lead that, teach that, model that, um, pass it along, disciple our teams, the congregations, 
it will be a principle that mm -hmm. not only the church community see, but the world will go, wait, yeah. there's something real about you guys. You're not just a Sunday gig or yeah. religious right, situation. Yeah. You're authentic and you really do believe in the God you love and, yeah. and serve him. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Could you, Brandon, speak to a bit of how that piece of humility has uh, shaped and informed how you guys are going to do leadership of mm. the new church? And Because yeah. I think people will be thinking about that, like, okay, yeah. Brian's been the leader at Koinonia and Brandon and Emma at Slate. How yeah. has humility played a part in what your new roles will be moving into the new church? Yeah, that's a great question. One of the other... Um, definitions that I carry on for humility in my mind, C.S. Lewis, where he says, don't think less of yourself. Or humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. Yeah, right. And that has really helped me through my life sharpen my understanding of what God's gifted me in. It's mm. not humble for me to say, oh, I'm not really gifted there when everybody's going, you're gifted there. Yeah. Right. Um, and that's the way I, I, at one point in my life, took it. Like if I just downplay every bit of gifting I have, then that's humility. Hmm. And meanwhile, it's not. It's actually just thinking of yourself less in situations, <laughs> allowing God to put uh, use whatever he's put in you in whatever situation he finds himself in. And so I've seen this demonstrated in um, Brian and Rebecca as well, where, man, like, I said this to Brian and Rebecca at one point, because um, for those that <laughs> haven't been following the journey of our churches and you're just jumping in, um, I'll be the lead pastor of the um, of this new church, and Brian's going to be the location pastor here at Bloomingdale. Where actually we're filming this right now, and um, there was one point where we had those conversations, and and the clarity came really fast, mm -hmm. um, not just for us but also for our teams. Yeah, and I said to Emma, I said, we just got a master class. And what it looks like to live with Christ as the most important thing in your life mm -hmm. and not a title, not a role, mm -hmm. not what people think of you and to live it out and not just say it. Because right. I think some of the things I've heard Brian say, I've said myself and yet I haven't actually seen anybody um, put their um, money where their mouth is, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. And yet here's Brian just going like, here's my gifting. I would love to serve in it. Right. <laughs> And, he's not, and, and, and by the way, it's humility on both sides because he's not saying, oh, I don't have any giftings, so, you know, Brandon, you should lead. I'm, yes. He's going, no, here's my gifting. Yeah. I'm not thinking less of myself. Right. Like, I have a real gift to bring to this whole equation. Yes. And I know where it fits. Right. Mm. Man, like, I, I am going to carry with that with me for the rest of my life because there is going to come a time where I'm not going to be the lead pastor of this church either. Mm. Right. And I need to be ready to be able to release it the way that I, and you're not like releasing as much as we're releasing ourselves into the future. Yeah. But man, that, that is humility on display. And I think that it's taken to men that understand real humility. And this is a weird thing. Like we're talking to ourselves. We're so humble. It's like Moses. <laughs> yeah. writing. Yeah. Debatable. He wrote the first five books. People will debate that, but it, <laughs> Moses writes, Moses was the most humble. Right. Man on the earth. It was me. <laughs> it was me. Um, but that's what happens when you're walking out real humility is you're able to hold intention. This is about Jesus. That's where our focus is. Here's the giftings I bring. How do we make this work? Yeah. And so I, th I think that's mm. the process we took. Yeah. Not even I think it. I mean, that's, that is the process yeah. we took. Yeah. 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 And I think it's helpful. Sorry, I'll just jump yeah. in um, for people to know that. It also wasn't just the two of you going, hey, this is where I'm gifted at. This is what you're gifted <laughs> yeah. at. Like when, when, the, when the word we is used, that's not just submission to one another. That's submission mm -hmm. to the teams mm -hmm. to say, this is our, this is our gifts. Mm -hmm. They're this, affirming the calling. Yes. They're affirming direction. Yes. They're calling out things we don't even see sometimes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I just wanted to highlight that. Um, no, that's good. Just so yeah. people aren't like, oh, Brian and Brandon are just... Just picking each other. Yeah. Um, yeah. And even as we focus on this um, biblical principle of unity, uh, humility, it um, there's so much involved in it. Emotions, pride. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, hey, this is my reputation. Here's my rep. You know, here's what I did and my accomplishments. And so all that stirring in it. And, and people will go there, too, of, oh, no, you don't want to step back, you know, so quickly. Or, you know, you still should be this. And I remember one of our leaders really wrestling with this decision. And this basing it a lot on age and just saying, but, yeah. but 
Brandon's such a young boy. I'm like, he's 32. You know that? Yeah. A young boy. <laughs> boy. <laughs> I'm not offended. <laughs> yeah. If I can continue to age like that, yes, that'll be a good right. thing. <laughs> and they, they then turned and said, but Brian, you have 20 more years experience. And I'm like, but we've got the same God. The yeah. same God can equip and empower mm-hmm. 30 or 50. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And so this this principle that we walk out is is submitting ourselves to God to see what God's going to do. And a concept that connects with the definition of humility for me is, I have nothing to lose and nothing to prove. <laughs> um, God is the only one who's going to position me and place me somewhere. And so if he wants to move me somewhere else, he will. It's not somebody taking it away. I'm going to lose my role or my title or my benefit package. No. <laughs> God is God is the one who's going to reposition me, so I don't have to fear losing something yeah. with a title or a role. Yeah. yeah, and I've got nothing to prove because I'm not here to prove to my brothers or a community of look at how good a pastor I am, all my accomplishments. Uh, the only one I'm I'm living yeah. for is my heavenly Father. Yeah. Yes, and so He knows my faults clearly, and He knows my successes. But He's in both of them, <laughs> strengthening my faults, and mm-hmm. He's the one empowering my successes. So. For me, then, it's it's easier to walk in humility with some of that concept. I say easier, not simple, yeah. um, because we, yeah. we talk very real about it, too. And I had to process and think, well, this is the first time I'm not going to be a senior pastor or a lead pastor. Right. But what was interesting when I started with Koinonia, some of my personal story, was I just came to the church to serve. And uh, started on the Look fa- where you are now. facility team. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. From the pit to the palace. <laughs> <laughs> you could write the book. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, right? I started on the facility team yeah. and overseeing the facility here at Bloomingdale. And I didn't have any concept in my mind that I would be pastoring toward being the lead pastor. Right. That was in Pastor Steve's heart and some of the leadership here. Yeah. And so I just walked that way. And I think that's, we submit it back to God yeah. in both our roles, all of the community, and see what God wants to do with his church. Mm-hmm with us as his servants and yeah it's cool how he empowers when there's a humble spirit there yeah oh i totally agree that line i often come back to i remember when you shared that with me the first time i have have nothing to lose and nothing to prove Mm -hmm. um and i have to revisit that in this process yeah um because there are a lot of times where it can easily feel like there's a lot for me to lose Mm -hmm. or a lot for me to prove Mm -hmm. um and and so I consistently remind myself that anything I may have to prove is because God has given it to me. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. you know, whatever it may be with gifts, skills, accomplishments, yeah. mm-hmm. he's empowered me to do them, yeah. to, to, to walk them out, to get there, to carry them, whatever. And so he will prove them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, how would you guys encourage our, our churches to keep walking in this concept because as much as it's been something you guys have had to practice Mm -hmm. in the leadership meetings and making various decisions um now as a staff you know we're like okay well there's two youth pastors here like do i really believe that i have nothing to lose and nothing to prove i have to work it out and then same for all of our teams like we we there there are many incredible amazing um leaders like volunteer leaders in Mm -hmm. both of our churches and i can i know from feeling it myself how easy it is to feel like i need Mm -hmm. there's some things to lose and i have some things to prove so how do we how would you guys encourage us to to work that out as we keep walking in this process Mm -hmm. (laughs) there is a newsboy song i think it was called like big house um, a big, big house. Oh, oh yeah. Lots, lots and lots, lots of rooms. rooms. <laughs> a <laughs> big, big <laughs> yard. Where we can play football. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Go, guys. Heidi Fleming sings that song all the oh, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so joyous. And um, <laughs> even if you haven't heard it, you don't need to hear it to get the principle. But, like, we serve a God with a big kingdom. Truly. He... <laughs> It's not, you know, he says the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send more workers into the harvest field. Mm. Man, this is an abundant God. Anybody that thinks there's not a place for them in God's plan. No, no. God's just hoping. He's wanting us to pray that there would actually be more leaders. Right. Mm -hmm. So in a process like this, this is not a process of thinning out leadership. This is a process of going, can we actually create more disciple makers. Mm. That's what this entire thing's about. Yeah. This shouldn't be for anybody be about what am I going to lose, but what am I going to gain in the kingdom? Mm. 
And um, I think that as as I journey through this, I've never seen God not be able to use more people. Yeah, <laughs> the church always has more vision than there is resources, mm-hmm. more yeah. ideas than there are people to do it. Mm. More like if <laughs> where's the camera? <laughs> if you want to serve in the church, there's a place for you. Yeah, yeah, so true. No matter who you are, right? Yeah, yeah that was cool. You had a conversation with a Koinonia a key volunteer, active yeah. volunteer yeah. about this similar topic because that person was feeling the same angst of, but if we, if we merge together and, and Slate's younger, I'm already aged out, so I'm going to be replaced and there'll be mm-hmm. nowhere. Mm-hmm. And you just affirmed that individual and said to, said to him, no, it's, it's not if, what was it? Or it's going to be, where will you serve? Yeah. It's not, this isn't a question of like, if you should serve, but like, where do you want to serve? Yeah. Yeah. Al- there almost will like be opportunity. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I don't think the kingdom of God is in a, um, you know, a position where there is too many workers for the, right. We're not over yeah. the kingdom of God is not overstaffed. <laughs> it is not <laughs> <Yeah>. overstaffed. <laughs> Very true. And, um, all we have to do is figure out how to do that really well. And mm-hmm. I think we already have a great start because both churches went through a pandemic, which weeded us down to the most important thing. Yeah. Not gathering crowds, but building disciples. Amen. Yes. Amen. And so, um, we always need more disciple makers. Yeah, and where you serve with your unique giftings in that call is up to you. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. cool. I want to change gears a little bit and ask like some more of the why questions. Some things people may be wondering is like, are are you doing this because some the one of the churches is in some financial yeah. problem and we need the other? Could we let's just speak to that a little bit? Mm-hmm. It's time to come clean. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that we've chosen this as the forum. <laughs> yeah. This is where we're going to let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> Should we tell them? <laughs> you know what? Oh, man. Those questions come up when there isn't clarity. Right. And so it's. I'm glad that they came up because what it does is it gives us an opportunity to say, um, no, that's not true. Mm-hmm. Um, even on uh, one of the YouTube... So that's what you're saying, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. now. It's not true. Yep. Yeah, it's not true. Yeah. Very not true. Um, but even on the video, uh, on one of our YouTube pages, I think it's the slate one, so you can go check it out, but somebody for the announcement, we put it on our YouTube oh, yeah. page yep. and somebody had commented, um, fake smiles, uh, clearly not, not, um, good hearts, uh, in it for the money. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> wow. I'm like, this person doesn't understand church. <laughs> <Yeah>. All right. <laughs> It was this had this was somebody that was not a part of, clearly not yeah. a part of either church. Right, it just was a, a troll, troll scrolling around. A complete troll. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, if you do go to one of our churches, sorry for calling it a troll. But it was a total <laughs> troll comment with a fake name. Yeah. Right. But man, distrust around church and money is a real thing that doesn't yeah. stem out of what either of us, our churches have done when it comes to finances in the past. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately what has been done sometimes in the kingdom. And so mm-hmm. I think Quite honestly, everybody just has to take our word for it. You can go and look at our, um, on the CRA website. Mm -hmm. Uh, You can actually look at the charitable giving Mm -hmm. and you can see that we're both in the green. Right. You can see that everything's going well. We're paying our bills. Like that's all public information. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so you don't even really have to ask the question. You can literally go check it out. Yeah. Yeah. We're (laughs) both in good spots. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, truly. And that was an inspiring element that we believed. This is a God idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it, if it was a human idea, we'd be looking for solutions to fix one of our church's problems. Right. Yeah. And this could be the solution. And this could be the uh, solution. Yeah, and, and so I've been asked, oh, Brian, is this your way of retiring quicker, you know, mm-hmm. to pass off pastoral leadership? and and uh, Or are you weary and tired from the leadership transition of Koine or the sure. pandemic? Right. And, and when I evaluate it and bring it to my mentors and pastors and say, yeah, guys, got check me on this. Am, is there any flesh in me? And mm. they said, this wasn't an idea that you came up with. Right. <laughs> this is an idea yeah. that we now believe God brought and landed with Brandon and Brandon approach, which is an interesting uh, yeah. journey yeah. because of the journey I've been on or Koine has been on. And yet it's like, no, this, yeah. and, and what's, what's so interesting with this about the deeper parts of a story. I remember praying uh, three, four or five months just before you connected with me and God stirred in my heart to trust him to take me somewhere that's harder hmm. because coming out of the pandemic, I was just like, I need to go somewhere easier. <laughs> like right. I just need, you know, I've put in my time, you know, just relax. And I submitted all those human thoughts to God. And, and he said, will you trust me to take you somewhere harder? And I'm like, if I say no to that, that means I am lacking faith in you, Lord. 
And I said, I will trust you to take me there. Mm. And so all this, that lays so many stories individually for us and collectively behind the scenes that we know that God was drawing us together. It wasn't us looking for a human solution of something's wrong with Slate and this is what they need to fix. So they're going to call on Koinia or mm. vice versa. Koinia is aging out. So they should probably call in a younger congregation. We really believe that both churches are, were, are currently in a healthy position. Mm -hmm. We're not perfect. We've got room to grow and mm -hmm. maturing to have, spiritual maturing to happen, but truly believe God's in this because he wants to take what we plant in the ground, get back to yeah. him, yeah. and he's going to do something bigger than we can accomplish individually or humanly of ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, we really believe that. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's good. Another question kind of along the same lines Um we were discussing like, hey, what are some things that you're hearing? And one thing that somebody heard was Quantity is selling their building and we're building a bigger one. <laughs> yeah. A bigger one. <laughs> is that can you speak to that? Are yeah. we doing that? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, we... That's wild. <laughs> Isn't that wild? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was I think a thought that somebody I can't had. imagine a bigger building than this one anyways. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. This one's big enough. Yeah. <laughs> and the uh the enemy throws confusion in the midst of God's journey and God's vision for his people, right? He wants to throw confusion in there. He wants to stir it up. He doesn't want there to be clarity. Mm -hmm. He wants the uh, God's followers to be in the dark, um, to be believing things that aren't true. Yeah. So the enemy will plant thoughts, gossip, rumors out there. And so we can easily say, it's, no, it's not true at all. As Prior to this conversation, Koinia leaders were walking and saying, God, how do we steward um, that with all the resources you've given us, this big facility out here in the community of Bloomingdale during a pandemic when nobody could be in the building, oh, what yeah. do we do with that? So we yeah. sincerely were asking. And so our prayers then um, were just with not looking for solutions. And then when this idea starts to come on our plate and we begin to pray in it and say, I, we think this is God, all of a sudden we were like, oh, this is what an answer to our prayer yes. right. that God was saying, I've got plans for what I've given yeah. you to yeah. steward and care for. And you've experienced that on the other side mm -hmm. um, with the EBC relationship and yeah. wanting to make disciples and continue to send people out. And, and it's like, whoa, God, you're bringing this quicker than we imagine. You're answering prayer and giving us direction. And so on the inside, we can answer, here's how God's affirmed mm -hmm. um, and, and we'll dispel those rumors. Yeah. And so we like it when people ask us, is this what's going on? Oh no, we'll tell you. Because we love to tell the story of what God's doing on the inside. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Is there anything else you guys feel would be good for us to cover in terms of like why, why we're doing this? Hmm. Man, there's so much why. Yeah. You know, like Jesus, the last words he, he says before he sends, ascends into heaven is, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that I have commanded. And we can also pick up in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 1, where he seems to say a bit more than Matthew records, where start in Jerusalem, yes. go to Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem, right where you are, start here. Yeah. Judea, once you've covered where you are, go to the next spot. Once you've covered Judea, the next region. From there, the world is your... <laughs> it's a big jump. It's, it's a big reach. jump. Yeah. And... Um, that is the heart of God, that we wouldn't mm -hmm. stay where we are, that we wouldn't just gather for the sake of gathering, but we would gather to scatter to make more disciples. Mm -hmm. And I can't, you know, I'm up until this point in, in our ministry journeys, um, God's given us Waterloo Region to focus on. Mm -hmm. And as he's been uncovering the Judea, the Ontario for us, I think it's like, well, what can we do to set ourselves up well as a church, capital C church, to respond to this call to make disciples here in this province. And I think that the call has never changed. We don't have to come up with a new mission statement, new vision for our church. It's always been the same, but how do we contextualize it? Right. And so the question has always been, well, how do we make disciples in the area we find ourselves better? Mm -hmm. And I think two churches coming together with the, with the varying experiences and the similar DNA will, in fact, allow us to make disciples in Ontario better and faster. Mm -hmm. A few different ways. Because mm -hmm. you're bringing people that have been deeply committed for a number of decades in one church with people that are rearing to go and they see yeah. their futures ahead of them and they want to establish that in Christ. Pair that together and, my goodness, you have mature excitement and uh, holy ambition for mm -hmm. what God's going to do in this province. You think of this merch. 
this is what the church in Ontario is going to have to do more right. if it's going to survive. I don't right. mean us doing more of yes. it. Um, although that might be a possible, probably not merging. We don't want to keep going through name changes. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but the church in Ontario is going to have to do this. Work together. I, I think we're, we're actually going to set a bit of an example that people can come to and go, how can we walk this out in humility? Hmm. How do we walk it out hmm. in unity? How do we? And if we can be a part of what God's doing and set a bit of an example of how to walk that out in the way hmm. he wants to walk it out, that will benefit making disciples in Ontario. Yeah. If we can look at all of the young people that have calls of ministry on their life that are currently in both congregations and say, we're not just telling you there's a place for you, we're sending you mm -hmm. to the place God has for you. Yeah, that's good. That will make more disciples in Ontario. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if we look at the next generation that was jumping around on our last prayer and worship night and we go, we actually believe in them, that they're the future leaders of this church mm -hmm. and give them real opportunity in our churches, that will make more disciples in Ontario. And mm -hmm. so... The why doesn't stop. Like I, I could just keep saying that phrase over and over again. Here's another example. That makes more disciples in Ontario. Yeah. Right. But man, we're going to unfold that over the next few decades. Yeah. Every yeah. Sunday, you're yeah. going to hear something about why this is getting us closer to what God's calling us to. Mm. And the prayer of any great movement of God is always, God, what are you up to and how can we be a part of yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. And that yeah. has been our prayer through this whole yeah. process. And so... Mm. This is what God's up to. Yeah. It doesn't always make sense. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you use the word faster, make disciples faster. And some might balk at that. Aren't we supposed to do church slow? And, and yet I believe what God's, we believe what God's doing, accelerating that speed, mm -hmm. expediting, making disciples, because we're in some crazy times in our world. hundred um, yeah. percent. The world is crumbling. It's yeah. broken. It's, it's, and people are breaking under the society's pressure and, and where they get their definitions from. And, yeah. and some would say we're in the end times and, yeah. I, and I'm not predicting any dates or anything like that, yeah. but we know that's how Jesus taught us to think. Yeah, it was a sense of urgency. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so that's what we said, sensed as we prayed into this and say, then God, if you're going to expedite the purpose of your church through us submitting to you mm -hmm. in humility and unity, then God, do something. Uh, do what you want to do where you're at work. And an element that came out of um, uh, some prayer times I've had, we've submitted it, we agree with it, is the parable of the talents, the five, two, and the one. Mm. And we could easily hang on to our one talent. I thought, this is our church. Mm -hmm. This is what we've got. And it's going to keep growing. It'll, the interest is small, but mm -hmm. it'll be okay. We've invested in a little spot or, or nobody's going to take it from us. That's not the kingdom of God. Yeah. God says, give me what I've given you yeah. and I will do incredibly more than you can think or imagine. Yes. And so that's part of the why too. Absolutely. Believing that God's going to do more. The kingdom is slow and fast. Mm -hmm. And so it's <laughs> go make disciples, wait on my spirit, and then what next? So the yeah. disciples take this command, they go wait on the Holy Spirit, have the moment um, in the upper room. And then the next thing you expect based on all of our discipleship literature is they're going to go one by one and go slowly take over the world. Right. Yeah. And yet what we have is Peter goes out, preaches a sermon. Yes. And those 140 people mm -hmm. that were in the upper room, all of a sudden he preaches a sermon, 3,000 people added to the number that day. Yeah. Undiscipled <laughs> yeah. individuals added in one day. Yeah. And you just imagine, I read a discipleship book. It takes five years to disciple one person. Like, uh, this can't be the healthy. math doesn't work out. And God's going, you're not in charge of growth. Yeah. You're in charge of disciples. Right. If you pursue growth, you might not get discipleship. Yeah. If you pursue discipleship, there's a chance you get growth, be ready for it. Yeah, that's good. And I think that that's the fast and slow is in God's hands. Mm -hmm. And if we're following God, he has a way of doing some things rapidly. And we need to expect that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So true. It's good. <laughs> cool.